I'd like to call to order the each county county council regular meeting for Wednesday, February 8th, 2023. Please stand for the pledge of Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Second district councilman Lenny Francisco, president. Third District Councilman Terrence Hill here. Fourth District Councilwoman Stacy Winfield. Present. Fifth District Councilman Robert Garcia. Present. Sixth District Councilwoman Gilda Orange. Present. Councilwoman at Large Deborah Bolaño. Here. Councilman at Large Wayne Brett. Here. Councilman at Large Kenneth Monroe. Present. Council President Monica Gonzalez. Here. Council uh, Police Board. We pulled back in the day when we were having a chair. We have Reverend Daggett out here. Do you think he's a good chair before we start? He is welcome if he'd like to. Thank you, Reverend. To this illustrious body, thank you so much for the opportunity to stand before you. Let's pray together. Most gracious and eternal God, our Father, O Lord. Lord, we love you and we thank you that we are your children called according to your purpose. Lord, as we work on behalf of the citizens of this great city, we pray, O oh Lord, that you would guide our hearts and guide our minds, that we would be committed to recognizing that we will all be held accountable as we stand in the gap. Lord, bless each family that's represented here, bless the leadership, and bless the residents of East Chicago, Indiana, O oh God. Should that our families, and help us to look to you for all things, for you are an awesome God. This and all blessings we ask in Jesus' most precious name and for his sake. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thanks. Okay, we start off with public hearing. Dr. Bina, can you please read the ordinance? Ordinance 23-0001, sponsored Mayor Anson Cope. Additional appropriations ordinance appropriating certain monies for infrastructure replacement and improvement work. Hello, William Allen, city engineer. This ordinance pertains to improvement and repair work throughout the city. Total amount is $2 million. 1.2 out of the $2 million will go towards asphalt and concrete throughout the city, so sidewalks, curbs, aprons for the alleys, asphalt patches in the roadway, as well as uh, the replacement of the alleys. The remaining amount, roughly $800,000, will go towards repair and maintenance for uh, utilities such as uh, our electrical lights, fixtures, poles, uh, bridge equipment for Dickey Road, and um, anything that may happen uh, as a result of accidents, whether uh, cars will damage poles, you know, every year, unfortunately, and then um, sidewalks that are uh, in, in disrepair. Okay, is there anybody here to speak for or against this ordinance? There is not. Public hearing is closed. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Thank you. Okay, we move on to our regular meeting. Minutes of the council meetings. We have minutes for the regular meeting dated December 14, year 2022. So moved, Madam President. Second. Okay, 
Motion made by Councilman Garcia, seconded by Councilman Hill. Any questions on the matter? Roll call, please. Franciski. Yes. Hill. Yes. Whitfield. Yes. Yeah. Garcia. Yes. Orange. Yes. Yeah. Olanios. Yes. Bradsburg. Yes. Monroe. Yes. Gonzalez. Yes. Communication from the mayor. I have none. Communication from department heads. Counts payable warrants. One, two, three, one, two, two, CC. Zero, two, zero, two, two, three, CC. Zero, two, zero, eight, two, three, CC. And zero, two, two, eight, two, three, L, A. So move that further. Okay. okay, motion made by Councilman Franciski, seconded by Councilman Council Rasky. Any questions on the matter? Roll call, please. Franciski? Yes. Bill? Yes. Winfield? Yes. Garcia? No. Orange? Yes. Bolaño? Yes. Ransford? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. Payroll warrants by weekly 020323. Payroll warrant miscellaneous 020323. And payroll warrant monthly 020123. Oh, Madam President. Okay. Motion made by Councilman Garcia, seconded by Councilman Massenburg. Any questions on the matter? Roll call, please. Francisco? Yes. Hill? Yes. Winfield? Yes. Yeah. Garcia? Yes. Orange? Yes. Yeah. Bolaño? Yes. Francisco? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. We have Frank Rivera, Executive Director. Department of Redevelopment, Mark Town presentation. Good evening, Madam President, and all the council members here. And well, sorry, to the back of us, all the residents of the city of Chicago. Welcome, and I appreciate the fact that I can come here and have some conversation with you concerning the Mark Town project. If I may take off my mask, my yeah. question. That way, I'm not choking to get air. <laughs> Okay, so our first page that's uh, in front of you in terms of the um, presentation is uh, a Mark Town Historical District study that we did. And I'm not going to discuss all the study because that was more uh, in line with uh, Urban Design Venture, that was with Mr. Walt uh, Aglin and uh, Mr. Dave Jordan. I'll discuss what I had as part of my, my presentation. So if we go to the next page, what we did was we introduced ourselves and gave everyone who wanted. Okay, um, and so what we did at the meeting is that we wanted to make sure that everyone had a point of juncture to make sure that they could ask their questions and so we passed out cards. And in the meeting, I had indicated that I was going to have uh, all the questions typed out and I have them available in my hand. And we are going to put this on the website in terms of how we responded at the meeting. So everybody's on the same page. Uh, we also talked about the results of the housing study, but I won't uh, be in, in, into that conversation. I am going to talk about the exterior housing renovations program and Keith Salvi tonight is going to be doing the roundabout updates. So if you look at the next page, it's a summary that was presented to the whole entire community. And this is what Mr. Watman discussed. And there's a lot of detail in terms of how he did the study. So I don't go through all that because he had maps and everything. But in a meeting that we're hoping to have with you again, he'll be present to do that. And so what I did was I went downstairs, took a picture of all the uh, the dates that you have as a meeting, so that he can choose a date and allow us then to create a, a PowerPoint presentation for him in terms of all the maps because he wanted to put them against the wall. And I think that took away somewhat in terms of how he wanted to present it. But it was good because he did point out that every single 
detailed other map. But this way, you'll see it in a PowerPoint presentation with all the details, you know, with all the color codes that you all had uh, a moment to see when you were uh, at the meeting. The objectives, there are seven objectives that I'm going to go through. And these uh, objectives were presented for consideration by the city of East Chicago for the revitalization of the Marchtown neighborhood. And the first objective is to provide financial assistance to owner occupants of homes in Marchtown. The second is to improve the physical appearance of homes in Marchtown. The third is increase the property values of homes in Marchtown. The fourth is eliminate physical deterioration of the exterior of the homes. And then the fifth one is encourage home ownership from rental occupants. And the sixth is eliminate gliding conditions and encourage maintenance and upkeep. And the last is renovate a model home to demonstrate the feasibility of the program. And in this presentation, you'll see that model home. Okay. Eligibility, this is what it's gonna take in order for a owner occupied in the residence for my town to be able to meet these eligibility criteria. And the first is houses must be owned and occupied by residents of Marktown. Owners must have lived in the property for at least 12 months before applying. And houses must be located within the boundaries of the Marktown neighborhood. And I believe Mr. Uh, Walt described that on a map for everyone to see. And that's what he'll present in the next meeting. Utilities must be connected and in good working order. Property cannot be scheduled to be in foreclosure by a financial institution. And all mortgage payments must be current and up to date. There cannot be any outstanding real estate tax liens or municipal tax liens filed on the property. All types of single family homes are eligible detached houses, duplexes, triplexes, and quadruplexes. And here's the scope of the, of, of the work we're going to be working on roofing, chimneys, flashing, soffits, and fascia gutters and downspouts, wall surface stuffed over brick, porches, foundation patch and repair. And in the meeting, I made it real clear that we're talking about external, we're not talking internal in the foundation. It's all external. Everything that we're going to be working is outside the house. We're going to look at the continuation of the scope of works and it's doors of the exterior and storm and screens, windows, window seals and lintels, Window treatments, walls above grade, painting, walks, and drives. Now, there are some other, because this is a living document, it's constantly bringing in new things. There are going to be some other aspects of what we're going to do as a scope of work, at least maybe four or five or six of them, in terms of adding more to this. Now, not eligible scope of work. This means interior work. We're not doing any interior work. We're not doing any landscaping. We're not doing antennas and satellite dishes, floodlights or motion detectors, demolition, auxiliary structures. No new auxiliary structures may be constructed under this program. And here are the, the financial assistance. Okay, the city of East Chicago will provide financial assistance to homeowners for exterior renovation work on their homes. The following is a summary of the assistance that may be provided to eligible applicants. It will be a grant that will provide eligible homeowners funds. That grants up to $40,000 per house are permitted. Now, there are times that you'll find things that are on scene that usually that's a change order. So it can go up in the $40,000. But that, we have to justify that when the contract goes out and starts working on it, it seems that there's other problems there. Okay, homeowners must have owned and lived in the property, as I said earlier, for 12 months before the date of application. Now, to continue the financial assistance, the homeowner must continue to own and occupy the home as their primary residence for five years after completing the renovation work. Now, the interesting thing about this is that we can have a forgivable loan. And it's uh, good for five years, that means you have to live in it for five years, just like we have in the funding side. Okay, so once it's forgiven, there's an earned uh, rate in terms of the grant and a forgi for forgivable process in terms of the annual rate of 20% per year as the anniversary date of completion of the work. Meaning more or less, if you're there for five years and say we spend 40,000, you don't pay anything. But if say you leave for four years, then that means you're gonna have at least 80% uh, paid off. The other 20% you have to pay is back. Uh, repayment, repayment of the percentage of non-earned portion of the grant is required if the homeowner moves 
sells, transfers title, or it is no longer the homeowner's principal residence. When continuing the financial assistance, the homeowner must sign a promissory note stating that they, their heir, or assignees will repay the unearned portion of the grant. There is no maximum income requirement, nor is the homeowner's income a determining factor for this program. So we're not wanting to look at anything in terms of income. We just want to make sure that you're living at home. Uh, the homeowner completes an application for financial assistance, which is reviewed and approved by the city of East Chicago Redevelopment. And if you go to the next slide, you'll see that this is one of the homes that we are the owner of, the city is. We are intending to make this home, on the next page, if you look, to look like this model. This is what we're intending to do in terms of the models. And if you go to the next page, it's going to give you an illustration of models in different variations. So now we can view it in different angles. It's a beautiful model. We are going to be doing open porches, closed porches. It's up to the homeowner. And each view, you'll see uh, a difference of how, how, how it looks. Now, what I was doing, and I had said this in the meeting, and I believe some of the council people were in that meeting, but I said that I was going to be looking at the list that was given to me in terms of all the signatures of all the people that were present. So I did an analysis. I went through the process and I looked and I went through a couple of these and I found one client that's really eligible for the program already. Because all I have to do is make sure that the person lives in that home, that they, their taxes are paid, everything looks good, there's no liens for the city. And I did that by going onto the GIS, the assessor site, the recorder site, and the tax recorder. So that, that way I can assure myself that this person is good to go. And because we're the owner of the other home, we're going to fix that person's home if they want to join and be part of this program. So it's all it's all for the individual in terms of them wanting to be part of this process. Now, I was surprised that a lot of the signatures in here were hard to read. So it's going to take me a little while to look at it and say, okay, well, who is at 408 or who is here, who is there, and how can I reach out to the homeowner and things of that nature. So that's basically my presentation. If anyone has any questions, <laughs> yes, I was basically there. Let's start with the councilman. Okay, Ms. Monroe. How are you, doing, Frank? How you doing, if, Frank? If I'm not mistaken, I was at the meeting with several others. Uh -huh. If that one person wants to fix their home and the person next door cannot afford it, I want to know if I'm correct. It cannot be done. Am I correct? As long as they're homeowners. On both sides, it can be done. So what if the homeowner on the other side they want to fix their home? Then I can't, I can't do it. It has to be both of them together. Yeah, that's what I want people to know. As a matter of fact, that's also what we did in some side. As a matter of fact, what we did was we did a footprint. We did four years or maybe eight years of study on Sunnyside. At first, it was very interesting in terms of how it was maneuvering itself. And it became a beautiful footprint because people were starting to get interested in it and uh, two homeowners came together. Yeah. Some of them didn't get together because whatever issues they may have. Yeah, well, that's what I want people to know that I can walk one and, and uh, counseling uh, with Kush uh, don't want to do it. So I lose out, am I correct? Yes, sir, you do. I can't work on a half a house. It's not going to be conducive, especially if you're going to take off the roof and do various So I will get penalized. It's not penalization, it's part of the process in terms of what we have identified as the program. Councilman Massacre. Uh, so my question is, uh, are we governed by federal guidelines that prohibit uh, well, the change of the master? Yeah, no, because I don't okay. know what the direction we're going, but go okay. Uh, that prohibits us from uh, allowing non owner occupied units to be uh, given those dollars? No, I'm going to tell you why. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you repeat? I could... So, are we um, governed by federal guidelines that says we cannot allow non-owner occupied units to be uh, revitalized? Let me give you uh, an analysis of this. Okay, yeah. it's a good question. No, I can't answer it in that fashion. I have to answer it with Sunnyside in view. If you would let me say so. But with all due respect, Sunnyside was part of an NRSA program, which is CDBG funds, which has a lot more criteria involved in it that specifically is driven to income calculations and everything in detail. We do not have that in the Martin Town project. And there is no CDBG money for that at this time. 
uh, for us to fix anyone's with CDBG money in my town. It has to be the general funds. Okay. So in layman terms, can you please answer that with a yes or no? <laughs> no. No, no. We do not have the funds for CDBG, which are federal funds, to do that. Not for this program. But our, the, that's, that wasn't the question. The question. The question was, are we governed by federal guidelines that say that this program cannot be used for non-owner occupied? No, because this program that we designed here has no federal ties at all. No funding, none of that. So no. There's nothing that governs that. So if it's possible that something can potentially change that will allow that. I figured that was going to be a question in the hand. There's three budgets here. Each budget budget is designed for CDBJ. There's percentages that we have to extract the by law. The first one is administration, 20%. The second one is housing rehabilitation program delivery, 65.9%, and that's all the rehab sector. Okay, and then 15% go to what's called public services. Okay, so by the time you look at it, if I got $1.37 million, all of that's already been asked for to HUD. So there is no additional money for me to utilize. This has all been budgeted out of it. Hold on one second. Did you have an additional question? I do, uh, even though that. I mean, you mm -hmm. did answer it, but um, mm -hmm. so how does the bidding process work and who picks the contractor? That's going to be us in combination with the homeowners. The homeowner will have the option of choosing based on the specifications and the cost of everything that they're going to be doing for us. We have the space and everything is what we want to see. And so the homeowner will have that option. And the bidding process? That'll be done by us as well. Okay. And one last question. Uh, do we have something in place that can encourage non-owner occupied uh, units owners to sell their units, like to try to contact them and say, you know, kind of encourage them to sell? But obviously it that doesn't matter because we don't have the funds for those. Right. So when we initially created, we assumed we knew that we didn't even. Are there any other questions on this side? <laughs> We're just going to go down the line. So, Councilwoman Lyons. <clears throat> Can you tell me how many of these uh, properties are owned by the city? Yes, it's in the list right here. But like I said, this is part of the conversation that has to be uh, done by Mr. Um, Mr. Walk Hagelin, I believe. I'm not trying to research these, which ones are ours. Let's see, my renters occupied. See 36.7 privately owned, 46 publicly owned. I believe he has that statistic, and we're going to probably have to wait um, for the next meeting, or I can get that to you after this, and I talk to a walk, and I can get you a raw numbers. So when you, when you say you. For now, and you look down that list and you found a potential. Yeah, I was just doing that yeah. to see whether or not what I said in the meeting would right. work, and right. it does work. So, if we, if later down the line, uh, and we get more people or we don't, I mean, I'm just, mm -hmm. I guess I, I, I'm not sure about maybe how to ask this question, but the city owned properties. Yeah. I what will happen with those? I mean, are they going to be able to get fixed under this program too? What would you do with that? Yeah, they could be fixed, but most of them, some of them, we do have owners that are part of a home and we are owners of the home. But we can't fix every home that the city has because we have to send people in there and say, hey, this home, just there's no way that you can continue to fix this one because it is not fixable. I mean, there's, if you have to go through there, you see some, some areas that you just can't fix them all. It's too deteriorated. In some of these homes, not all of them, mm -hmm. some of them. So you fix them and then what? You sell them? We're going to have to sell them. We you sell them? them? Yeah, we can't keep them. So you make money. The no, city will we don't make, make money. money the city that. makes money yes. in terms of, a, of whatever accounts we place these dollars. Right. In. So then that way we can continue to use that like a revolving loan fund. 
Councilman Garcia? Yes. Uh, or did you have something? Yeah, okay, Councilman uh, Orange. So I know the Sunnyside uh, program, and I was in all agreement to, for uh, them not to let landlords coming in and fixing up their properties because we got a lot of landlords out of, out of town that want, wanted to apply for that program because people, uh, landlords had contacted me and did not understand why they could not be part of that program. But I don't think that we should allow a landlord to come in from Chicago, fix up his property so he can sell it for a, a bunch of money or rent it to one of our residents for astronomical amounts. I'm not in favor for uh, fixing up landlords. I, I know that it's hard when one side is the owner and then you got a renter on this side and I understand that. And it should be some way that, I, I understand about the roofing and everything, but that's the same thing. The sunny side is hard. And a lot of people have problems that want to fix their own properties. And then the second one had problems with roofs in the middle. I understand that part. But I am not in favor for fixing up a property for landlords so they can sell it. or even if they had to keep them for five years, but they still haven't had to put anything out of their own pocket, fix up a property, and then be able to sell it back to somebody else, and they haven't had to put any skin in the game to fix it up. And I made comment to that, <laughs> but at the same time, yes, yeah, so you're right. With roofs, you got to be very careful because if you do anything, if the two roofs don't come together, you're liable for anything that gets damaged in those homes. And that's the reason why we're wanting to have two homeowners together so that way we can build the whole structure all at once. Okay. Councilman Garcia. Yes, uh, our, um, my fellow colleagues, there was an excellent question that they asked and then, uh, I didn't even think of, but uh, we kept on mentioning the CBG funds. We're not using the CBG funds, oh, so I, you know, this can get people confused. So. Where is this money coming from? Is it so? Uh, well, the, if you remember uh, in the meetings that I had, I said hopefully I would be able to come to all of you to ask for an appropriation from the uh, general budget, correct? From the general budget, that's it. So that means like uh, council and the ranch per se. So we're able to change anything that we need to change, reference uh, guidelines and, and, and stuff like that. And I agree with uh, Councilwoman Orange that. We don't need these uh, landlords coming in, but it's unfair for a, a, a owner that lives on the other side not to get their uh, home fixed. And that's the dilemma we had in Marshtown that we got quite a few homes like that. But most of Marshtown won't be able to be eligible for these programs. We got to come up with some that help out the residents of Marshtown. Um, so if they're this, uh, a, a building that's a home that's owned by the city, and it's real bad, so that owner next door can't get it fixed. That's what you're telling me right now. See, that's not fair. Right. And well, we control that, and we should be able to um, change those guidelines uh, as we go forward. Um, I can't, I can't um, say yes or no on your question. It's a good question. It's something that's beyond me. So it would have to be with, 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 with our administration. So yeah. the mayor then. All right. How long they have of the homes that you own in Marshall? How long have you owned? That I can't tell you. Okay. Can you get that information to me for each one that you yeah. have? Have you guys owned them more than five years? I can't answer that because I really wasn't looking at all of that in terms of each home. I did it as part of an example. Now, that's easy to find. All you got to do is just one of my staff members who goes to every one of the homes that we own and find out the date in which they were owned by us because a lot of them. Were obtained by taxes that people weren't paying. Okay, people who currently still live there, who uh, who were owners, and let those properties go. And now we're coming behind them, fixing the properties that they should have fixed years ago when they were homeowners or owned the property. This is who And uh, Frank, uh, yes. you were saying that uh, can be able to fix. Get the property up there, but how did you come up with this property? Just you had to think of okay, if I fix every property in Marshtown, this is it's gonna cost me X amount of dollars. So, how much money do you have to fix? Or is this gonna be year by year? Um, it, it could be year by year, but um, 
I can't answer that in terms of dollars. That has to be so administrative decision in terms of what they were done. Uh, my last thing, uh, and President, is Frank, please go back to here. This time on this, the top about the, the residents in March down, we need to change those um, criteria. Councilwoman I have a question and several comments, especially when you're dealing with Sunnyside as a resident of Sunnyside. First of all, do you have, have a research on how many residents, owners in Marchtown versus those owners that live next to a duplex room? Do you have those numbers? No. Okay. No, the, the numbers are probably within this one particular second page, but as I was saying, the experts who did this for us will be here in the next meeting and they can answer those particular questions you're asking. Okay, I know you said you were looking at the addresses that was placed on it. You couldn't tell the owner's names. If you look at the assessor, all you have to do is put the address in and the owner comes, pops up. That I don't. That's what it is. So, okay. Um, if you see in the city owned property, they own duplex, one half of a duplex, or they own, okay. So if they own a half of a duplex and you have an owner on the other side, you work together, but you're putting the new, the new owner in there. No. All I'm, fixing, I'm, just, I'm just, just fixing the, the outside, and if we decide to fix the inside, we can do that too. And then it's, it's our portion of it. You can't sell the homeowners. Now, when you talk about Sunnyside, it wasn't that many homes in Sunnyside that was done due to the problem. Before this administration, this had come up before. And the residents gave the information. There was a lot of seniors that live out here. They were afraid to give it due to giving out their social, all their personal information. So they withheld on it. Now, as this pro, uh, project came back up, you could tell the homes that was done through the city program, but there was hail damage that came through when it started, when you all started this program. So a lot of the duplex on Sunnyside, the residents' homes were done through their insurance. And like the other uh, Councilwoman Orange said, we have uh, more renters out of Sunnyside than we've had. And for a person to live in a home on one side for 30 years, and you might have a renter that lived in that house for 20 years because they're a senior that lived in there. It's unfair. Is it a way that that, you know, they could, well, that's a different program trying to get them to be able to own the home. But for example, we had a resident that passed away that was got some of the program and the neighbor did also the resident passed away and therefore the family had to pay out the money. But it's not that many homes in Sunnyside that went with that program because of a renter on one side versus an owner on the other. I, I hate to see that program happen that way because it's unfair to those that have lived there for years. And if that house on the other side is vacant and if the city doesn't own it, then is this program really going to work? Because it didn't work that well to me in Sunnyside. If I can answer a few of those things, uh, since I run the department, CDBG dictates us to do cap uh, income calculations, bring information like that, which can be very difficult because I have to get three months worth of data. This doesn't have any of that criteria. And those homes that we're talking about, um, I have a list of how many homes we did. Well, you can tell the difference of the home that you was out to the city and those that right. did the hell down. Right. And CDBG will not allow me to uh, go to that rancher and uh, fix the house again. That's why we decided not to do CDBG versus no CDBG over here. <laughs> do you think that ever be a program for? I mean, I know because the duplex, you want them to look identically alike. But, you know, it does. You have some homes with two different colors that's looking outrageous, but. If it's just the outside mm -hmm. to make it look uniform, <clears throat> you know, I, I hope that's a something a program that you offer. Well, I think Robert, or, uh, Councilman Robert, has had, had an interesting point. You have to take this to the administration. I can't answer that. Just bring in a suggestion. Councilman Hill, do you have anything? 
Councilman Francisco. Did you have a total number of how many that you were targeting for markdown? Yeah, the numbers here, but as I was saying, it's basically more uh, the next person coming to the city. We don't have a round of whether it was no. 20 or 30 or 10. Or no, right here, there's 256 parcels of land and 210 are privately owned. But that doesn't give you enough feedback because these gentlemen were answering all of that and presenting that in the presentation. That's why they're going to come for the next school. So, so in the next presentation, they'll have, they'll have all of this and everything else. Yes, sir. All of the breakouts. Who, who are homeowners, who are renters, it's all color code. Okay. And that's how we did it. So then that way it identified everything in detail as to those numbers you see. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Councilman uh, Is it possible, because um, I know we've had similar programs throughout the city for time where it allows businesses and different things of that nature to take advantage. Is it possible that, that we could create something to say, Okay, a landlord or non-owner, they won't get the full of forty, but we'll match up to X amount of percent. That way, we could try to get those landlords involved in this program, so it could overall make the entire marks down the better. Is that is that possible? That's that's an interesting point. Anything's possible, but it starts with the mayor and all of you coming together. If that's the case. Man, anything possible. Councilman yeah. Norris, Councilman Norris had two because they did do the facade on Main Street right. and, mm -hmm. and the different other uh, businesses where they gave a percentage as long as they do that. Right. And then you could put more stipulations on the landlord than you do mm -hmm. the actual homeowner. Absolutely. So uh, that's something that uh, right. we could. Try to uh, go and talk to them about because mm -hmm. that would be better, mm -hmm. and then that way to keep the landlords just from this out out from to pick up selling it, you right. know. Right. And, and, and to reference that, you make a good point. There was an 80 20 percent facade that's all up Main and Broadway, but then if you go further down uh, Main and over here, it's a 50 50. So that that's interesting. 50 50 on even yeah. 64. Yeah, so something, and then again. Now hold them to the same guideline. If you sell within five years, you got to pay back. Just in point. Councilman Garcia. Yeah, uh, Frank, if you could take this back, I appreciate it. Let's not rush this project. Let's get this done. Let's get it done right for the residents of Marchtown. Okay. You just heard some excellent ideas on this side. You know, 60, 40, 50, 50. You know what? If you know if this council wants to write a letter to the mayor, that full support, saying this is what we like to have. Uh, for a regular remarks on, I would like you guys to join me to write this letter uh, and sign it, you know, but don't rush this just because an election is coming up. It's kind of like you got nothing to do with you, but let's get this done the right the first time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I have a couple of yes. questions. So how long, when does this program come into effect? It comes into effect as soon as we get the allocation. And when is the process of starting to um, the construction process uh, that would take a bit because I have to make sure that the, the people that we're working with our homeowners on both sides or so adjust it whatever direction we go um, that's going to take some time and then you've got to bid it out the bids you don't do it overnight it takes two two uh, rounds in terms of the publication of the notices okay give me a timeline like like it's going to take, 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 take you know what I mean give me take two months three months it can take four, it depends on the owner. The owner can say that, for instance, it's got, it's got time spent. I'm the owner, I own this house. Okay, well, when we look here, you didn't pay your taxes, you didn't pay your lien, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. You don't have any credibility until you give me some materials to show that credibility. So there's so many different avenues to this, I can't really even pinpoint. Okay, the other thing um, is it says here on the, I think it's a third page. There's 67 only occupied. So that number is not that high. Nope. Um, what I would like to see is we know that then we know the owners why and you might have done this already, send a letter out specifically if you do have a lead, if you do, we'll work with you. So or or some kind of counseling so that they can become eligible if they're not eligible already. I think that's something that um, would would benefit, of course, 
the 67 owner occupied um, residents. So that's just like ideas, just thrown out there. I'm worried about the, the biggest thing I'm worried about is a timeline on how long it's going to take. That's my biggest thing. But again, um, you have the suggestions from my colleagues and I just think um, Mark Town has been neglected for a while and um, it's a historical district and it would be really nice if we could do the pictures, if we could make those pictures and, you know, to uh, make all the houses look like that. So um, I'm glad that um, everybody's participating in this and we do, we will work with the administration to make this right. All right, Ken, if you don't mind, uh, Madam President. There are 256 parcels. All this shows you the relationship that you're saying. I have every single name from every single address that these gentlemen went to. And so we know who's who and what's going on. So eventually, as you are working with us, we'll see what we can do with it. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. On the agenda, please, um, Clerk Medina. Salvi, Director, Project Management Department. <laughs> Good evening, Council. Uh, Keith Selby, Director of Project Management. Um, I just wanted to piggyback um, with Frank. Um, he was doing a presentation out in the Martown area to take this time to give an update on all city district projects that are current as well as uh, will be upcoming. Uh, the first uh, to speak about is the Mark Town roundabout. It was um, a $1.8 million project that we were able to substantially complete back in November. Uh, however, there are a couple of uh, punchless items that we're still uh, unable to finish. We, we plan to do this uh, soon the weather breaks. Uh, I want to list a couple of those. The first thing you probably need to do is uh, curb painting and pavement striping, as well as we need to install the side uh, inside the center of the actual roundabout, as well as the surrounding area. Uh, another punchless item that we're working on is with uh, Mexico. Uh, as you guys are through there, there are four utility poles sitting in the center of the roundabout. So we're currently working with them to do a relocation of those poles. And then once that happens, we'll uh, do our final step, and that'll be to install the structure, or excuse me, the sculpture uh, that uh, is the same as the one over at the office uh, round on this one. Um, the next project I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about, and we're kind of excited about is we're still trying to do the theme of uh, improving that corridor. So um, the next project is what we've entitled the uh, 129th Nikki Greenscape Project. Um, this particular project is a $3.5 million project that will uh, encompass the limits of uh, Nikki Road at 129th all the way down to Michigan Avenue. So we'll work on this particular project is going to be uh, replacing all the asphalt going down that entire stretch. We're going to be doing some concrete and curb patching. Uh, we're gonna also install some new light fixtures uh, and light poles. Um, of course, our curb painting and, and pavement markings. Uh, and we're looking to get that particular project started probably within 60 days. Uh, and we're hoping to have it completed by November 1st. Um, that is um, a good opportunity to kind of I guess increase the uh, visibility as well as the bringing it up to speed in terms of that corridor. Um, I think the roundabout turned out very well. Um, I know um, when I was at the meeting with Frank a couple of weeks ago, um, unfortunately, the roundabout does not control traffic. Uh, the traffic is the traffic. So coming out of the uh, BP or coming out of the mills, the traffic is the traffic. What we we're uh, hoping to do with the roundabout was to have a continuous flow. Uh, and those that are engineers that know better than I 
had uh, recommended that that was the best solution for that particular intersection that I believe had seven conflict points. So um, in closing, I would like to say, first of all, I want to thank the, the, the residents of the city of East Chicago for their patience during this construction season. Uh, we have quite a few projects going and I, I do realize that it is an inconvenience uh, during construction. However, it is terribly needed um, to get these improvements. And I, I guess the questions of the answer. You anticipate starting this spring when the weather breaks? Yes, uh, for the uh, street escape project. Yeah. 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 Think your road is bad and getting in the rain. It's very, very dark. Yeah. Very, very dark. And you see trains coming. Yeah, we have all of that in this new package, this uh, 3.5 uh, million dollar package to do um, just to basically increase the light, increase the actual pavement, uh, as well as make it more interesting. How about uh, cameras? Uh, I don't control the cameras. That'll be something that you would need to talk to the uh, police department about. Um, all I can say is that, you know, we will definitely increase the amount of lights. Uh, and my goals that we want to do that particular quarter. When does uh, Midco plan to start their um, municipal station, their metro station there in uh, near the March time? Uh, they're currently working on it now. Um, we have not seen their final plans. It's still in design. If I'm not mistaken, I think they're um, 60 to 80 percent complete. Uh, I'm sure they're going to share that with us once they've completed it. Um, you know. Our project will the relocation of those poles in the center of the actual roundabout is a separate project from the actual substation of greater revamping of your scope. If there didn't want to be any uh, delays in traffic, they can let their own residents from our side of Absolutely. Uh, I do encourage everyone, including the folks that are listening to this, uh, to subscribe to our Nixel. Uh, I do a, a great deal of notifications through this book, uh, Nip, Nip Hope to. Uh, Provide updates on any project and every project that uh, that I'm working on. Does anybody else have any questions? I just want to comment on Nixa. Nixa is a great, but we have seniors that they have very know how to work with cell phones. So they don't get those notifications. Do you have, are you going to mail them out to those programs? Uh, um, yes. Uh, Candace is going to answer that question. So we have um, some of our cell phone numbers that are we did hear what you said the last time, and we have been doing that for all of our projects. As a matter of fact, I believe about two weeks ago, prior to the closing of the 4600 block of Magoon, there was a personal letter sent out by the mayor, kind of giving an update, you know, basically thanking their patients during this process, but uh, as well as our contractors, uh, you know, what we call door knockers. So it's just a piece of paper giving them an update. They knock on the door, leave it in the door. So um, we do as much as possible to basically keep everybody updated. Um, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, there are rental properties, some of the information goes to the, the homeowner versus the renter. So that's why we do the door. Any other questions, Councilman? Yeah, I just want to um, say something with Frank and make sure that he gets this information. Because what we had in Sunnyside is people that had the work done and the work was beautiful. But then all of a sudden, they got a different tax bill because they were assessed differently because of the work that was done. And that's what I just want to remind I'm not trying to scare anybody in Mark's time, but your taxes will not be the same because of your property value. They can only do 1% over that assessed value, but what I have seen that the assessor's office have started doing because the uh, 1%, they have started assessing people's houses very high. If I live on a block where basically the houses were like $30,000 to $40,000, that's what they were going for. But people start uh, selling them high and they had work done on them, and now they have assessed people's houses like $90,000. They can't sell them for 90000 but I'm just letting them know because a lot of people call me from Sunnyside and they say, well, I didn't know my taxes was going to go up. But anytime you have improvements on your property, your taxes are going up. So I just want people to be aware that they don't need to be 
Anybody else have any questions? I, I just have one. The project that um, is going to be completed, you have all the money for that already. Uh, you're referring to the streetscape or the roundabout? The roundabout. The roundabout basically was an allocation uh, that this council approved uh, an additional appropriation to the end of 2021. That encompassed all the money that we needed to complete it. So for the 129th and Dickey, that's a new project that you're going to come back to? That is correct. And okay. that project will be starting in approximately about uh, 60 days or so. And uh, fortunate enough that we're working out the two council members. Uh, Allocated that in the budget for uh, the engineering department. Any other questions? Thank you. Okay, now we are at committee reports. Yeah, I asked uh, our attorney to ask that you were in the financial and thank you. Uh, and you don't you know, get to that information. Um, after going through it, um, we have 115 million cash on hand, and we have 34 million for our budget. And if you guys remember last year, when we were going to do giving the rates for uh, public safety, one thing we got was the gloom and doom from um, Bennett and uh, Attorney Ryan Gregory. The city has money. The city has money. So that doom and gloom, it was just a, uh, as they say, smoke mirrors. So but we have 115 million in cash. Uh, and 34 million for the Thank you, Councilman Garcia. And on, on other committee reports? Any board reports? Ordinance is our first reading. Ordinance 23-004, sponsored Councilwoman Monica Gonzalez, an ordinance clarifying and amending ordinance number 22-0047. Someone first reading that, Second. Okay, motion made by Councilman Garcia, second by Councilman Monroe. Councilman Garcia. Is somebody here for that? Yes, clerk, moving that is. Three council members, council further. Question? Right. Can you explain the Lawrence. Yes, uh, back in 22, September the 28th, we scheduled a meeting uh, to pass the salary order for, for uh, civil employees. And that meeting was canceled. Part of that uh, ordinance, I had requested some changes be made to the clerk's office. It wasn't done. I was going to have an amended in that uh, meeting, the committee was canceled. During the two weeks that we rescheduled me, uh, or we waited for the next meeting, the author of the ordinance uh, went ahead and made those changes for me. We folks voted on first and second and approved it. Two weeks later, he voted on the third meeting and approved it. Inadvertently, my office sent to the mayor the original ordinance, because it wasn't titled amended, because you folks didn't amend it, the author did. Anyhow, it was a, a mix up, the wrong ordinance been signed and it's on record. I'm not comfortable with that, so I spoke with Mr. Allegretti. He said we could change it to clarify that in fact, the changes for my office are in it and you folks did vote in favor of it. Are there any questions? Councilman, uh, Attorney Jones, that did that actually happened. But don't know, you know, I've seen the money here. That actually happened. Yeah, it, it, whoever made the changes, I guess, didn't really make the changes correctly. Who, I don't know who wrote it in the first place. This this was uh, written by Attorney Allegretti, sponsored by the mayor. And your signatures are on attached to that. To the to the ordinance. The initial ordinance. So you can. See it on the attachment that we signed this we meaning you. That was the first ordinance that was qualified to send to us. Two weeks later, Attorney Allegretti went ahead and made the changes that I had requested some months prior. And you folks voted on it, and it was approved. Our office. Want to make sure that 
you know, let's see which one's better. So yeah. I'll have to wait for a uh, no, yeah, you don't have to wait. Okay, are there any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we can do a roll call. Franciscan? Yes. Bill? Yes. Winfield? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Warren? Yes. Bolaño? Yes. Bradsford? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. Councilwoman Orange. Oh, I'm just going to get the rules up on this one. Suspend the rules from here on second. Second. Well, suspend the rules, folks. Second. Suspend the rules. Councilwoman Orange, uh, motion to suspend the rules. Uh, seconded by Councilman Hill. Roll call, please. Franciski? Yes. Hill. Yes. Winfield. Yes. Garcia. Yes. Orange. Yes. Bolaño. Yes. Bradsford. Yes. Monroe. <laughs> yes. Gonzalez. Yes. Councilman Orange. I'd like to hear on second. Second. Okay. Motion made by Councilwoman Orange to hear it on second and third reading. Seconded by Councilman Garcia. Roll call, please. Franciscan. Yes. Hill. Yes. Winfield? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Orange? Yes. Bolaño? Yes. Ransomberg? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. I thank you. Ordinance is on second reading. Ordinance number 23-0001, sponsor Mayor Anthony Copeland. Additional appropriations ordinance appropriating certain monies for infrastructure replacement slash improvement work. Move on second, third reading, Second. Motion made by Councilman Garcia. Can I have a second? Second. Councilman Orange. Second. Councilman Any questions on the matter? Roll call, please. Franciski. Yes. Hill. Yes. Quinfield. Yes. Garcia. Yes. Orange. Yes. Bolaño? Yes. Bransford? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. Ordinances on third reading? We have no ordinances on third reading. Resolutions? Resolution 23-0002, sponsored Councilwoman Deborah Bolaño. A resolution of the Common Council of the City of Chicago concerning a petition for use variance to maintain the use variance of a vacant structure and a property property commonly known as 4814 Alcott Avenue. Yeah. This, the Councilwoman Blanis, do you have a comment or? Uh, I know Mr. Markovich is here. Okay, Mr. Yeah. Markovich would like to, uh, Mr. Markovich would like to come forward please. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. You need to make a motion before we start. Okay. Bring it to the table. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll make a motion to pass the resolution. Okay. I make a motion to pass this resolution. Second. Okay. Motion made by Councilwoman Delano, second by Councilwoman Garcia. Yeah. No. Okay. Um, go ahead. Right. I'm sorry, Mr. Mark. No problem. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak before you this evening. Um, the property in question here is 4814 Alcott Avenue, and it's a uh, commercial building, been a commercial building for since it's been built many, many years ago. It's been vacant maybe 20 or 20 years. Uh, it's a very, very good structure, and our plan is to renovate it from front to back. A new brick uh, facade, uh, new, new doors, new roof, uh, lighting, exterior lighting on the front and rear, security cameras. 
all new electrical, all new HVAC, uh, you can make a real nice place there. So the question that would come up is, well, what are you going to do with it? Well, uh, we don't know yet, but uh, whatever it is, it'll be a plus for the neighborhood. It'll be a good, either a good tenant or, or, or I'll occupy it. And of course, we will be good uh, and respectful to the entire neighborhood. Any questions? Councilman. Yeah. So I think that's a good idea. I ever spoke to talk to me. I don't think they were worried about the cheap parking trucks out of like So I'm quite sure you will try to handle that situation. Um, Councilwoman Bolanos opened the channels of communication with the, the neighborhood there, and we had a meeting, and uh, there will be no external parking. The parking will be internal in the building, or there is a, a a backyard and that backyard is going to be fenced in and also uh, lit and security cameras. Councilman Garcia. Yeah, that was my same uh, question. I got family that live on that block. You got a lot of apartment buildings, so parking is real, real tight. You got the bar on the corner, then you got the church on the corner also. So I'm going to park it very, very tight. So uh, there's no parking out in the street. Okay. Yes, um, I concur. And and uh, the the whole plan is to have either a tenant, if it's a tenant occupied, it'll be someone that will be within the building and not no 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 traffic in and out, you know, like a storage facility. And storage facility. There's a couple of things, but it won't be anything that's going to take them to the to the beautiful block of the 4800 block. Okay. Councilman Marcus. Yes, I just wanted to thank you uh, for taking the time out that day and getting together for that meeting. Uh, I know it was outside of the building. Um, one of the things that the one of the very important things that the neighbors were worried about is what type of tenants we discussed that and this is why i thought it was important to get together with you to uh to explain to you what they've been through and they've been through a lot um, and so i thank you for uh bringing this type of business or uh, buying this uh, the renovation that you're doing especially the cameras and and, and the lighting and staying away from the parking in the front and, and putting this in, in this neighborhood that's so much, they need it so much. And I know that you're going to be a good neighbor. And uh, I want to thank you for doing that. Thank you. And again, I want to thank you for opening up the channels of communication with the neighbors. Councilman Garcia. Yeah. Uh, did you purchase the tax really, or was that the city? Uh, that property, I believe, was purchased at a tax sale. Yes. Any other questions? Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Ms. Markovich. Okay. Thank you again, and have a great evening. Okay, roll call for the resolution. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Roll call, please. Francisco. Yes. Hill. Yes. Whitfield. Yes. Garcia. Yes. Orange. Yes. Milano. Yes. Ransford. Yes. Monroe. Yes. Gonzalo. Yes. Hey, is there any old business? Councilman Orange. Okay, so I want to clarify uh, the building is when uh, we're not here. How are we uh, doing it? I was able to be here last uh, week. I did message uh, Councilman Garcia, who was this show, and also the Council President. I never heard back from anybody. And I never got a message back, emails, nothing. How I could get on Zoom to be on there. So I want to know what is the proper way to be on Zoom, how do you get on it, when you have to notify yourself, Councilman Garcia, and the Council of President, how do you want to get on the Zoom? If, if I'm not mistaken, there was an email sent to you. 
there was a, there was a, and I'm, I'm, there was an email sent to you because once I saw it, I didn't respond because I was like okay, she has the email. But Councilman Garcia, yes, email is sent. Although I have had trouble with my email from the city 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 email it's different every time for security reasons. So it's not generated automatically. They have to generate it. So I just want to know what the process is, but anybody else has to be on the Zoom call. They know Does anybody else have old business? New business? I'm going to recognize Councilman uh, Francisco. Yeah, at this time we have a uh, Terry Delegate with Pine Avenue Bridge and the short. Uh, Good evening, Madam President, uh, respected council members. Thank you very much for allowing uh, myself and my co worker uh, from the Pine Avenue Bridge to uh, present a program for the city residents and also for the employees of the East Chicago businesses. Um, I'm Terry Belligan, the general manager of Pine Avenue Bridge, and what we're doing is we're presenting a discount program for the residents and the employees of the businesses in East Chicago that we will provide uh, a discount as long as the residents enroll their transponders. Uh, and I'll have uh, my coworker um, talk about the program while I hand out the flyer to each individual member. Hi, good evening, council members. Um, thank you for just giving us the time to come and just tell you a little bit more about the program. Um, it's a very simple program. As Terry said, it is a program for all of the residents um, of East Chicago, staff, employees, um, family as well. Um, we've already partnered with um, your administration and it is on the website uh, with a live link where you can enroll, where residents can enroll. Um, it's a very simple process. There is no risk to you. There's no risk to the resident. Um, you enroll via the QR code that is on that flyer, or if you go online, um, it's again a live portal. You um, provide your um, name and ad and your transponder information. So that's one of the key points of the program is that you do have to have a transponder um, in your vehicle so that you are able to be um, registered at a discounted toll, um, discounted toll rate. Um, so, and that is how we would track it. So if your vehicle, vehicle crosses the toll bridge with that transponder on there, we know that that transponder registered for the program and it will receive, um, and it will be charged a dollar toll. I don't know if Terry mentioned that right now, but that is what, um, that is what is the huge bonus or the huge benefit of the toll bridge because of course, um, you know, the elephant in the room in the room is that it is costly. So we're looking to find a way around that um, so that residents and friends and family and staff can use the bridge at a lower toll rate, at a lower discount of a dollar. Um, so you enroll residents again, anyone that enrolls. Um, you enroll today, it comes through our system, you cross the bridge tomorrow, and your toll rate is one dollar. It's as simple as that. There's no risk to you. There is no penalty for not crossing the bridge. Um, right now, it is, if I'm not mistaken, under our one-year process, just internally. We want to make sure that it is a successful program in the city. Um, but again, there's no there's no penalty. There's no um, risk to you um, to whether you take the bridge or you don't take the bridge. It's there um, as an option to you so that um, when you do take it, you're not paying the 275 or the uh, the, the pay by plane, the 450 if it's a pay by plane, basically. Yes, uh, can you explain this to the school city of Chicago? Because I know as former director of transportation, they have a lot of buses that go on trips to Chicago, 
um, if they're able to know stuff like that, but it would be a great thing for them to you know, benefit from this also. So thank you. That's a great question, uh, Councilman Garcia. We do have a program we would call the buses, actually commercial because it's a large, large scale vehicle. We do have uh, discount programs for that. All they have to do is call our number 219-276-8901. And then they would talk to Nancy and myself and we would put a program together for those buses. But currently this program itself is for passenger vehicles, which are two axle, even though the bus is two axle, but it's a large vehicle. How about for employees for school? For the yes, for the employees. So say for instance, an employee works at School City or works at any business. As long as the business and school city obviously is in East Chicago, the employee would register their vehicle, their personal vehicle, with their transponder, put down the address that corresponds to that transponder in that vehicle, and then there's actually a drop down that'll say East Chicago. They'll click that East Chicago group, and as long as that business and obviously school city, but they'll be eligible for this program as well. Uh, one of the things I want to make two comments. So the discount uh, rate is they discounted a dollar seventy five, so their toll would be a dollar. So I want to make that clear. Yes. Any other questions, Councilwoman Orange? Yeah. So since they're not going to run in the toll, how many people are actually using the service? So currently, uh, no, I was just saying I don't. <laughs> So this is going to be good. For you. So that's a great question. So currently, we we look at the trends of traffic. We're currently in a what we call a seasonal trend, meaning winter or holidays. We average about three thousand vehicles, and that's a combination of about ten percent trucks. So it's about three thousand vehicles. And as the summer goes on, that number rises to thirty five hundred, four thousand, maybe even forty two hundred. What was your company saying? The what? What was your company saying? I'm sorry, Nancy. Nancy Mitchell. Pleasure. Yes, Councilman Garcia. Yes. Um, you said it'd be dollar per car. Go correct. How long would this one last? As uh, Nancy said, uh, we look at uh, projecting it to last in uh, one year. Not not longer than that. Well, after after one year, and that's a great question. After one year, we'll evaluate it, right? And then if we uh, feel like we could extend it, then we'll extend it. Not uh, then we have to have in order for any program, we can't just let it go on perpetuity. But we will evaluate it after a year. And the reason I say that because I know administration has made a deal with them that we only get thirty cents per car for a lifetime on that bridge, and, and at that time, that's not much. You know, once time it goes on, I like that program that, that to keep on going, 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 going. Well, here, and I, I agree with you. So, the current uh, agreement that was signed way back when is uh, 10 cents out of every toll collected goes back to the city of East Chicago. So, if you think about it, is if we have, say, not only 3,000 vehicles, um, and you look at that toll rate, as that number goes up, we call it average daily traffic. If that number goes up to 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, then obviously that revenue share would increase as well. So it's a it's a partnership essentially, but it's not uh, you know a one on one partnership. But as we increase traffic, the city benefits more and more. And I just say that, and this what my next comment is not on you. I know that the deal that they made. Was not a good deal because it, sh it, sh it, sh it shouldn't have been for the nighttime of that bridge. As your toes go up, ours should have went up too, from 10 to 20 cents and so forth. So um, I know that's not on you, but uh, that's one thing that I know that was bad in that deal that your lifetime is 10 cents per car. That could be an issue depending on percentage. As your toe rates go up, our rate goes up too. Sure. Councilwoman Orange. And that was. Um... I don't think you were here on that council at that time, but it, um, the ones that were here, the recollect, there was almost no deal at all on Prime Avenue because the state had taken over. It wasn't like the city had went in and negotiated with the state. They say, if you take a deal with this company or the bridge, stay down. 
And it, so they had us by the barrel, but we did the best we could by it. And uh, the fact of it is, is that, like I said, Pine Avenue, but in that had been since we had that one accident where that lady fell off the bridge, it wasn't any more talking about whether you could keep, have a bridge up or not have a bridge up. They didn't want to give us anything. And, and, and um, Councilman Francisco said, we, we did battle for more money. But at the end of the day, the state had given them the go ahead to do everything. And we wind up doing the best we could. So it wasn't like that. Yeah, my boo was still hit, uh, hurt over that deal. But some money better than no money. You know? Yeah, I mean, we, we, I mean, the state was saying, if, if you don't take, and, and we were going to eat out the 10 cents, and, and they didn't want to give us nothing. But the, the state came in, they had to stay here, and the state said, if you don't take it, you're not going to go find that move back. And like I said, after people fell off the, the Klein Avenue Bridge, it wasn't the whole thing about uh, trying to keep it from going. Yeah, okay. I, I, I think it's better to get into a statement. Yes. So I think just uh, earlier, Mr. Selby talked about the reviewing of Dickey Road. I think this program aligns really well with the construction that will uh, have to be diverted off of Dickey Road. And if more people sign up for this program, then I think it'll help out the, uh, the congestion in that that area as well. Okay. Yeah. Just please let the residents okay. know whoever signs up that this program is only for one year. Then after that one year, it will be that uh, bigger bill. And, and we do. So when the, when anybody uh, registers, we we provide that information. Okay. Okay. Um, are there any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you all. Okay, new business. So, Good evening, everyone. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart for the questions, the you know, the respect that Mark Nolan has been for getting. Um, it's it's overwhelming and very much appreciated. Uh, Nancy is also a resident from Mark Town, and her and I have been talking about a lot of this and talking with the neighbors. And we come to you um, in hopes with some other residents. We didn't want to crowd the council room, um, but we will if necessary. We're asking that when uh, the redevelopment department brings you um, this gentleman, this contractor, and talks more about the redevelopment of Marktown. We ask that you guys stay with it until it is amended because all the stipulations that were put in there that he told all of us residents that day of the meeting, several of you guys were there. Um, it basically let us know that probably three or four houses out there are going to be approved. And the rest are not. Now we have elderly that that went to this meeting that have hard times walking, and they went there. There was no translator, which was promised. So we sat there and we translated. Um, the fact that they told us that they're spending two hundred and fifty-five thousand dollars on an art project inside the roundabout, and they're telling us that there's not enough money to help these houses that have abandoned houses connected to them that some of them the city owned and some of them we have slum owned. Why don't they invest that money in this project instead of in that art project that they're going to put there that nobody's going to pay attention to? It's the outskirts. You know, I think that that's wasted money. If you really want to help Mark Tom, go in there with, with, with an open mind and help us fix it. But he told us so many different things that he presented you guys with today that many of the residents got up and walked out because everything that we asked, it was a no. Um, you gentlemen were there. You were there. Um, I don't remember. Uh, Debbie, you were there. There were several people there, and uh, Rich, you were there. And, and so every question we asked him, you know, my questions were for the elderly. My questions were for, you know, the residents that can't afford it. He sits here and he says, oh, well, you know, they have their house on a lien or uh, on back taxes, so they don't qualify. Did he ever stop and think that maybe they're, they're in back taxes because they can't afford the taxes? You know, and if he also told us that if a resident dies, for example, if I pass away and we are approved of this grant, and if I pass away within the five years after it's done, 
they put a lien on it. My house, my spouse doesn't get the house. So I mean, it's it's all these stipulations that were added that I think that they need to be amended, corrected, fixed, you know, edited, however they want to title it. So I'm asking you guys before you vote, please reach out to the residents, get feedback from us, and and let us tell you what is being told to us before you guys vote yes or no. I appreciate that, Nancy. You want to add anything? Um, I should have worn different hats, I, but um, I'm not used to this. I'm not used to presenting. I'm not used to rebuttaling or anything like that. Um, some of you do know me personally, and you know I do not like the politics. I do not get in, like getting involved in that sense. But um, this hits really close to home because my father is a um, homeowner in Martin, has lived there for 45 years. And believe me, you, I have tried to get him to leave, and he does not want to. There is a love, there is a passion. There is really, really, I grew up there. I ran those streets as a little girl. So there really truly is um, um, some heartfelt, um, I think decisions that as residents now, which was you know, by grace of God that I ended up there, up there again, I should be in, in Texas by now. <laughs> but, um, but being there and, and seeing what is happening, seeing how neglected it is, as you have um, yourselves mentioned, I just want to reiter reiterate what um, Lourdes is saying is that, you know, you really look at um, that grant, look at those stipulations and um, make the decision for the betterment of the residents of East Chicago and everything else be put aside. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much. Is there any other new business? Public? District, there's uh, we spotted a bunch of uh, stray dogs running around, and um, we call animal control. We are there's been a lot of dumping in East Chicago as far as animals and dumping everywhere. Um, the health department, which controls animal control, needs help. They're looking for um, people to work there. So if you know anybody, please uh, look at the application and apply because we do need help. Um, any other new business? Okay, public expression. I have Joel, but I think he left. And um, Kimberly Rodriguez. I have to give the name and address. Yes, ma'am, right. please. Kimberly Rodriguez, 422 Park Street in Chicago, Indiana. They basically kind of said what I would say as far as the Mark Town meeting, um, except there's, you know, he brought up all the do's and don'ts, but I, been there for 64 years and I can see where some of their dudes are don'ts but our don'ts are dudes okay so it all matters on what the city wants okay I've seen them tear one home out of a quad down that supposedly isn't supposed to happen I've seen houses remodel and only do half their roof okay I've lived there forever I I've watched it. So there are a lot of things that are possible. And again, the amendments are very much needed. Uh, like the color of the home, maybe one half that does qualify. So now the other half, they want it, you know, they don't want the same color. Maybe in the amendments, it can say you need to, if you want this, since you are the second party, you have to match the home. You know, there could, could be amendments like that. Um, but no matter what, I want our center open. I don't care if only two kids go there. I want it available. And I told the council before that we have volunteers that will sit in there. You don't have to pay anyone. We want our center open. Our children have nowhere to go. They can't walk to all these 
new modern facilities. You know, parents are working, they don't, they're not gonna let their little ones take a, a bus. Okay, we are stuck there and I would like our center over. So thank you for listening. Thank you. For the public expression, do I have a motion for our agreement? So moved and second. Second. Made by Hopkins Garcia, second by Councilman Monroe. Four copies. Francisco? Yeah. Bill? Yes. Whitfield? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Orin? Yes. Melania? Yes. Massacre? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Gonzalo? Yes. Meeting adjourned. Yeah, yeah. If you die, I don't know.